Hello and welcome back to the Old School Iron Man. Last episode we trained up our combats to a reasonable level and then went ahead and got our very first Hespori kill. To get that kill we used some cooked carom wands which we bought from a shop in Brimhaven. But those carom wands are not uh, cheap. Each one's 300 each, and if we want to use hundreds or even thousands of them, we can't really rely on that shop, not to mention the stock's only three. So to actually make our own carom wands, what we need to do is be able to fish them and then be able to cook them. And how we do that is completing the Taibo One-Eye Trio quest. And with that, it's a very good fishing AFK for us to bank up some cooking experience, which we can then use to get up to level 70 cooking, for recipe for disaster. One of the items we need for the quest is a iron spear or better, and these hobgoblins drop a iron spear and a steel spear both at one in 64, so it's one in 32 chance uh, to get a spear, so it shouldn't take too long, and our high combats are gonna be pretty nice. Oh, it's a bronze one. Bronze one's way more common. But one thing we are gonna do is we are gonna switch to aggressive, so that way we train our strength now. Our attack is high enough that we have pretty good accuracy most places, and we have access to super attacks if we really need to uh, bump up our attack levels. This is just a little thing to note, but when you're doing this uh, iron spear or steel spear hunt, make sure that you don't attack the ones that are actually wielding spears. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but the ones who are wielding spears can't actually drop spears. AC number 29, we get our steel spear. Let's go do the quest. One of the more annoying items to get for this quest is a clean toad fox. Actually, we need two of them. Um, because low level wise, they don't actually drop from any monsters. So you basically either need to get them from farming through seed packs or some high level stuff to actually get the seed. And then for the actual herb itself, you can really only get it from Brimhaven Agility, which isn't too bad to get. Also, we're going to start planting Renar seeds and Snapegrass seeds at this patch. Because we have 50% Hesidious Favor, nothing here can actually die, so it's a good use of our high-value allotment seeds. And we'll need Snapegrass and Renars for prayer potions for questing in the future anyway, so might as well take advantage of this patch, which is convenient and doesn't die. And then to get the frog legs for the other half of the agility potion, you just come to the gnome stronghold at the north. You can remove the legs and use the toad legs on the toad flux potion, and you now have it to three doses, and you turn one into a four dose, and we're ready to go complete this quest. Ibo Wani Trio is done. Now to actually get the quest rewards, we have to go talk to the sons in the village instead of just getting it for completing the quest. Mayu gives us 2,500 attack and strength. Tinsei gives us 5k cooking XP, and, and he gives us the fishing XP. And he teaches us also how to properly cook them so we can make regular carambuans, which are food. Trade him, we can always purchase a new vessel and more carambuanji, but it's quicker to just fish the carambuanji ourselves. Oh, and we also got a rune spear that has been carambuan poisoned. I don't think that's actually a good weapon for us, but... In the case that we need a rune spear for something, I'll put it in the bank. Oh, it's a 12k alk. Never mind. We are alking that right away. I might regret that later, but we need the 12k right now. So in order to catch Karambwans, you need to get Karambwanji as bait, which can be fished at this lake here. And you get 20 per, so it's like incredibly quick to actually stack these up. Like in the time that I've been talking here, we've already gained over 100. Now, short term, we want to get 2.5k raw carom wands because that's approximately how much we need to get up to 70 cooking. But at the same time, I don't want to just sit in AFK all day because I want to get some stuff done. And carom wands are AFK enough that I can do them during the work day and it doesn't impact my work and that sort of stuff. So it's something I can do passively for like an hour or two a day and slowly build up to that instead of doing it all at once. But in the short term, I do want to get 500-ish just so we have enough food in the bank because carom wands are very good healing food. They heal 18 and they can be combo eight with regular food, kind of like how brews can be combo eight with regular food in RS3. 6,300, let's go actually fish the carom wand. 
The unique part about Cairn 1 fishing is that the fishing spot doesn't actually move. Uh, something about the code broke early on in old school where, like, it wouldn't move. And eventually players kind of liked it, so they decided to not have it be a feature. So the motto of old school is bugs become features. In fact, even eating Karen ones, like eating a lobster and a Karen one in the same tick was a bug that became a feature and eventually got ported over to Sarah Brews and Guthix's Rest. In terms of banking, I think the quickest way for us to bank is to go through into Zanaris. And then the bank is up here in the corner. So to actually cook the Karen ones, we're at the Hasidious House Kitchen, which we unlocked with our Hasidious favor. This oven here has a 5% better chance to cook successfully so that means less burning which means more fish and more cooking xp and that's the last of them 386 cook caram one that'll last us for quite a while how many did we burn 117 yeah so it's about a 75 ish percent chance which is good enough for me back to some quests and now that we have some food and quest done let's hop back to a pay to play world so we get our graceful effect and our weapon back. Getting a partner for Heroes Quest is going to be considerably more annoying because we can't just use an alt because, well, there's a lot of requirements and I'm not training up another account just for that. But before we even go to do Heroes Quest, we got to finish off Dragon Slayer 1 first. Map piece number one and a cheeky little telekinetic grab to get the second map part. You can pay him 10,000 coins, but like, why bother paying 10,000 coins when I can use two spells to save that and my cash stack is like 60k. We're so poor. And the final map piece have, has been obtained. The Crandor we go. I remember this like cutscene thing as like a child and it was so hype. It's like right here. This was... I was just like so proud of like coming to this point and it's nothing like special, but it just, it, it was really cool. Bye bye cabin boy. One cool little tip is when the cutscene is over, uh, you can click to return up the rope and you'll complete a Karamja medium diary task. And see we completed the task but the first time but going down doesn't actually do anything it's only going up and then for elvar you just need to make sure you have um your anti-fire shield on and we should be high enough level that if we just melee protect uh we can we'll be able to kill it in time the dragon fire hits can hit up to 10 and boom elvar is down now don't necessarily teleport out right away because if you run to the south here, you can click on this wall, which I believe is a one-way trip. Um, and you click on it, and you go through. Oh, and now we know where the secret door is, so now we can go back through. And I believe that's a medium task. Oh yeah, we discovered the hidden walls in the dungeon below the volcano, which is this. But you have to come from that way, otherwise it doesn't count. Because the first time you try to go through that way, it doesn't let you. And quest complete! Dragon Slayer. It's weird seeing the one beside Dragon Slayer, but there's a second one. Uh, two quest points, and we have the ability to equip rune plate bodies, and it doesn't say here, but also green dehyde body, and some nice little experience. And if we try to buy a rune plate body from him, it's like so expensive, 84k, uh, and the dehyde is 10k. So eventually we'll have enough cash and purchase them, but that's that's not yet, at least because we can't even afford it. The Ice Queen here drops Ice Gloves, which we need for this quest, but are actually going to be useful for smithing training, because you need a way to cool down bars when you use the Blast Furnace, and uh, I don't want to use a bucket of water every single time, so we can have these gloves equipped. Huge shout out to Tusa's Iron. I found him in the old school uh, RuneScape uh, friends chat for the uh, Shield of Arav, so thank you. Entry to the hero skills. We got 29k XP split over like 8 or 9 skills. I don't think we'll actually gain any levels. Yeah, didn't gain any levels. Uh, but that's some um, uh, good XP. But the main reason why we wanted to come in here was two reasons. First of all, Helimos sells a Dragon Battle Axe for 200k. And that's like a budget strength potion because you can use the special attack to increase your strength level. And we don't have the Herblore level for Strength Potions, nor do we want to use Strength Potions everywhere. 
And the other thing is the Fountain of Heroes. With the Fountain of Heroes, we can recharge glories and other Dragonstone jewelry here. So we can eventually end up charging a glory, which we can then use to teleport around. Our cash stack is an issue, and that's something we gotta fix, because we wanna buy this Dragon Battle Axe, we wanna do a lot of things with money, but we don't have any money because we have 54k cash. There's two main ways that we could get up cash. First up is Slayer, go start Slayer, killing things, they drop things, we can ALK and return a net profit on our nature runes. The other option is training up Thieving and getting that up. Going all the way to 99 will get us 15 mil GP, we're not going to do that all right now, but it just shows how much actual GP you can gain from uh, doing Thieving. So for an Iron Man, it's a pretty good start because the only way to get GP otherwise is through ALKs basically. And at our relatively low thieving level, we need to return to the fruit stall. We're going to be doing this up until level 50. Um, at level 50, we're going to go unlock the thieving outfit, which actually has a really cool effect, and I really like how it is on old school. And then we're going to do a couple quests to get us set up for later training in the thieving skill and get us that GP we so desperately need. Seems like a really weird time to stop here as we're halfway between a level, but we're now 15k experience away from level 50 thieving, which is our goal. And I thought I might as well complete a quest to bridge that XP gap instead of grinding it out here because I need to do that quest anyway to do the next training method. So let's go do the feud. Quest Helper is such a nice plugin. It even tells you like, oh, if you're going to do these quests later, then, uh, get extras. Like, I already knew that I was supposed to get three extra, but I didn't know about the Forgetting Tale of a uh, Drunken Dwarf. So, we're gonna pick up four. And the feud quest is done. As we've talked about, 15,000 thieving experience. And that will get us up to level 50. My map actually worked out. And we can now steal from Silver Stalls and Crack Wall safes in Rogue's Den. Now, the rogue's den is the important part about that, but we're not going to be cracking wall safes. So this is the rogue's den minigame. Essentially, we go through this whole agility thieving area, and then when we're done the lap, we get a chance to crack a wall safe, and that wall safe has a chance of having one of the rogue's equipment pieces. And I'll get into what that outfit does when we actually get it. I did this twice on leagues, one, once for each account. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward minigame once you've done it once or twice. The general rule of thumb with this minigame is that you move two squares at once, and you can always skip past a trap. So I believe on this one here, I can just search the first wall to disable the trap. Now I can run through the rest of it. Well, if I tried to run through all four of them, I would have hit two traps in a row because I would have hit the second square and the fourth square, and the second trap would have gone off. Like here, this one's only three traps long, so we can just run through it as long as we stop one square before because we only ever ended up triggering one trap. So this trap is the same one because it's like every other square that we walk to, we're here, we step to that square, we step to that square, we step to that square, and we step to that square. So if I click through here, we just run right over the traps without getting caught. Now when we get to the end of the lap, we get to crack these wall safes here. And we have a chance of succeeding. No, we failed. We failed that trap, so we only got our agility experience and a little bit of token thieving experience. Hey, our first kit. So when you successfully pickpocket here, you can take either a piece of rogue equipment or a rogue kit. And we take the piece of rogue, rogue equipment. And now we want to take... Uh, we'll start from the top. I just don't want to mistakenly take two of, two of the same one. And this will be the last piece. We are done. We get our rogues gloves. Here we have our full rogues outfit, five pieces. And the set effect bonus shown here is the full set gives 100% chance of double loot from standard pickpocketing. That means when we're pickpocketing, we get double the GP. And double the GP is very good for us because it's very hard for us to get raw GP as an Iron Man. Doesn't matter as much for mains, but for Iron Man, it's very important. And I wanted to maximize the amount of GP we get on our way to 99. Now, it took about an hour to get this, but I had previously already knew how to do it. So I want to say, like, if you don't know what you're doing and you're coming to it the first time, it'll probably take you two hours. I think that's probably a fair estimate. And I really like this outfit because it's not just raw extra XP but it's like a tangible bonus that you get that isn't XP based. And I always like those bonuses 
that aren't centered around get 2%, 3%, or whatever it is, more XP. So I think this was a great addition to old school and a great update. Black checking is a pretty click intensive process, but once you get the rhythm down, it's not too bad. You want to go in the order of knockout, pickpocket, pickpocket, and then repeat back up to the top. When you see your XP drop, you want to do your next action in the order. That way they are spaced out perfectly and you'll get two pickpockets while he is knocked out and then you'll be able to immediately knock him out when he stands back up. The only other thing to know is that if you fail a knockout, which does happen, the bandit will start attacking you, making it impossible to try to knock him out again. However, you can cancel that by immediately attempting to pickpocket the bandit with a full inventory. This will start the action of pickpocketing, cancelling the stun, and the bandit aggroing onto you. And because you have a full inventory, you won't actually attempt to pickpocket him. And that's basically all you need to know. Just get some XP. And there is level 55 thieving. We can now thieve the bandits with scimitars. So this guy gives 84 XP per, while the other guy before was giving 50 XP per, or 65 XP per. So this is a direct like 20% increase on XP per hour. And we're going to do this one up to level 65. I'm not too big on total level milestones, but with one more ore, we're going to get ourselves up to level 61 mining and 1400 total. 1400 total. I've been doing mining as my like, I don't have enough time to click, but I'm also not playing other games AFK. It's like my show watching AFK or like writing emails for work AFK because it's not too click intensive. And if I happen to like not click for a bit, sure, I lose experience, but it's not the end of the world and I just take my lower XP rate. It's been quite a while, but that is 65 thieving. With 65 thieving, we can now thug the Menophyte thugs. Whoa, what was that? No, with 65 thieving, we can now thieve from the Menophyte thugs. So we get 138 XP uh, per, and I think pickpocketing wise, we get 100 GP. There is 67 thieving. This is going to be our last level here for now, at least. Um, we got up to 500k cash total, and that's enough to buy all the things I want. And this method is so click intensive. At this, I'm getting like 180k XP per hour. And if I went to Arty Knights, I'd be getting like 140, but Arty Knights is basically AFK. I just hit the five for mouse keys over and over again. But this is like clicking on tick, perfect moving down when right clicking. And it's, it's just way too click intensive for me at this stage. So with our money, we're going to buy a set of rune plate legs. So unfortunately, the rune full helm can't be bought in shops. We'll have to rely it on monster drops. But for now, we can get an Addy full helm up here. And the extremely expensive runeplate body, for some odd reason, it's 85k, but it's our only source of it for a very long time, because I am not getting 99 smithing. Upstairs in the Heroes Guild, you can buy a Dragon Battle Axe for 200k. That leaves us with 164k left, which will more than tide us over. And our next goal is going to be getting a Dragon Defender from the Warriors Guild. This is a very important point for us, because... At this stage, we really don't have anything good to put in the shield slot, so this will be a very, very, very big upgrade. So this is our defender setup. We've upgraded from the full mithril that we were wearing before, and now the mithril is actually going to be used to get to. Uh, unfortunately, we really don't have anything good to go in the boot slot. Literally, our only other item that we have on us right now that gives stats our leather boots, so I'm just going to keep the graceful on for the slight weight reduction. We have our 2,000 tokens. This should last us quite a while. It takes 10 tokens away every minute, uh, so that's like 200 minutes, so three hours of killing the Cyclops in here, and every time we get a defender, we have to come out to Camfrina and uh, show it to her, and then she'll give us the Cyclops that drop the next defender. Each drop is 1 in 50, so I'm hoping uh, that we go at least close to drop rate, but let's... Uh, Rarg and pot up. Defender number one down. That was 37 kills, so not too bad. And iron defender. And there's the steel defender. I've started actually equipping them because they provide better stats uh, than the Thali shield. That's crazy. First KC black defender. And mithril R RNG is on point. Addy defender, one more to go up here. It's been quite a bit, but we're up to 2,200 raw caram bonds. I, I want to say that took about four hours of AFKing, but let's go ahead and cook them. That should be just enough to get to level 70. 
which is the last skill requirement we have for Recipe for Disaster. 70 cooking obtained. We still have about 165 raw, so I'm just going to go finish this off now. We got over 2,000 cooked carob ones. That'll last us for quite a while. Don't need to worry about this low-level food anymore, as each one of these heals 18. So they're going to be our main food, at least until we start fishing sharks and cooking those up. But let's go finish off the Dragon Defender. We're in the basement of the Warrior's Guild, and if we show the Rune Defender to Lorelei here, you've unlocked the door, but you still need 100 tokens from upstairs before you can enter, as well as 10 for every minute you want to stay inside. So our 600 tokens should last us 50 minutes. And these Cyclopses in the basement have considerably better drops. Like, they drop a lot of Rune very frequently, so we're gonna our cash tags are definitely going to go up here. Uh, even higher than the 50k we got upstairs getting this rune defender here is our runeful helm drop it's uh as rare as the dragon defender i think they're both one in a hundred uh but we got our upgrade and we now are full runed up pretty nice there it is yes this was 150 ish kc um, let's kill one more for good luck you know you gotta go for the back to back yeah we almost got all the way up to 77 strength while doing this if you include the Cyclops upstairs, we killed a total of 403. This will be the 404th kill, which is still below drop rate because you should kill 350 upstairs and 100 downstairs if you're on drop rate. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Uh, yeah, you always kill one more for good luck. I don't think this act, having a second one actually has any use. It doesn't even out for anything, does it? Uh, oh, it's 40k out. I'm not going to out it because that's funny. But I guess when I make an Avernic Defender eventually, if I ever get to Theater of Blood, I have another dragon one to look cool on the bank. So this is our new gear setup. If we look at the offensive stats, which if we're being honest are the most important, we're up to 95 slash bonus and 86 melee strength and if we compare it to with just the shield uh, we lose a lot of accuracy like look at that we're down to 71 the strength isn't a big deal but it's really the accuracy because you can see we get 24 more slash now and now we just need to figure out our, our boots and our ring and probably get a fire cape but that's going to be quite a ways off also our also our cash decks up to 309k which is pretty reasonable uh, we're still going to have to fix that uh, by going thieving and going to arty knights, but I want to get the medium arty diaries for that first, which requires 59 smithing. So we got a lot of mining to do before we can get that done. That's going to be the end of this episode. We did a lot in upgrading our gear. Like I feel like we have a much better setup now than we did two episodes ago. If we look two episodes ago, I basically couldn't do melee combat because I didn't have anything, and now we have mostly full rune, the dragon scimitar, the dragon defender, and a nice little skill cape. Have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Next episode, we're probably going to focus on our rune crafting and slayer skill, as those are the two lowest skills we have right now, and I want to start using Tears of Guthix to get some free weekly XP.